I'm happy to talk to you today about the election, about how we all achieved this collective success that we did despite huge obstacles, how our system works before, during, and after the election, and how we can improve. But this hearing is not taking place in a vacuum. It is taking place in the middle of a national tidal wave of disinformation, politically inspired lies designed to mislead and manipulate people. So I will not at this hearing amplify or dignify conspiracy theories. We've seen a lot of them this past month in the federal and in the state level. And they're not just wrong, they're dangerous. And they have to stop. And they're dangerous in the short term because I think someone might get killed. I think someone in this country, maybe in this state, is going to get killed. We have amped up people out there who believe wild and unsubstantiated theories about our democracy that risk inspiring violence and even murder. Already in this country, there have been death threats and terroristic activity aimed at election administrators and employees of election equipment vendors. The Secretary of State of Michigan, two nights ago, while she was decorating her Christmas tree with her four-year-old son, faced dozens of armed protesters who showed up to her house shouting obscenities and stop the steal. So while folks in our office haven't received such direct threats, there have been aggressive behaviors, members of my own family, Members of my own family have been the targets of harassment by people who seem truly to actually believe this stuff. They seem truly to believe these corrosive fantasies that are out there being fed to them by people with large megaphones. So the conspiracy theories are dangerous in the longer term because they are ca causing serious and lasting damage to our country. In a democracy, we always welcome strong differences of opinion, as we do at this committee and in the legislature. But we also need a basic shared reality. And millions of people are being told big lies repeatedly, not just about a particular election contest, but about our entire election system. And those lies are tearing us apart. They're doing the bidding of our foreign adversaries, and they are poisoning our democracy. So I hope we, that we don't even see today any indirect airing of conspiracy theories here. Any member, regardless of party, or any testifier, regardless of viewpoint, who indulges that kind of recklessness, who tolerates it, who encourages it, or even hints at it, is, I must say, coating themselves in a shame that will never, ever wash off, ever. Um, I think it goes without saying that every single person um, would uh, abhor any kinds of personal threats uh, to any Secretary of State. And I want to assure you, this is not the first time. As Secretary of State, I had threats as well. Uh, it seems to be the nature of the course, take it in stride. I think uh, this year it is quite a bit more public and I think more uh, variety of numbers are, um, are in there. And, but certainly um, no matter who it happens to, no matter who is, uh, that we all abhor that and find that reprehensible and disavow it and do not support it. However, that should not ever put us in the same thing that when we ask questions about our election system, that somehow that in and of itself is some sort of shameful activity. I will also reject that. Elections are about people and it's about the voters. Uh, it's really the day that Minnesotans govern. They're the ones on election day that are governing and choosing their uh, representatives. And we serve the people of Minnesota through senators, House, legislature, any elected officials. And they have a right to ask questions because the people of Minnesota ask us questions. And it is certainly appropriate for us during this time to be able to ask those questions as well. Um, the 2020 election in Minnesota was a great big success on multiple levels. Uh, there was no instruction manual. There was no guide, there was no template for running a statewide election during a once in a century pandemic. Uh, thankfully, nonpartisan election officials from every level of government worked extremely hard and worked together really well to provide uh, meaningful access to voters uh, and the highest levels of security, accuracy, and integrity. And the voters of Minnesota this year really leaned in to the challenges. They didn't lean away or turn away, they really leaned in. Tell me what actions have been done. Um, to make sure that we're going to bring Hennepin County into compliance with the violation, knowing, knowingly violating state statutes in the composition of ballot boards, 
Thank you, Madam Chair and Sec uh, um, Senator Coran. Thanks for the question. So the question that you highlighted at least the most specifically was the composition of the ballot boards. As you know, that's ongoing litigation right now involving Hennepin County and others. There was an argument about that, oral argument just after the election uh, before the Minnesota Court of Appeals were named in that lawsuit. So there's not a lot I can say about that. The judge below disagreed. I mean, just disagreed that that was the case, that Hennepin County had done anything. So there are people appealing that. It's everyone's right to appeal. But so far, the state of the law in Minnesota with the district court ruling is they have not violated the law. You came out and said that you, you believe that we had a, a very high level of integrity on this uh, election. The, my constituents have contacted me numerous times uh, regarding concerns with the integrity of the recent election. And my question to you, would, would you support us in conducting an independent forensic audit of the election so we can put that to rest and actually restore the election, the, the faith in the election system to my constituents that are questioning this? So we can put, if, if we got faith that we had a great election, let's do a, an independent forensic audit of the system and put that to rest for, for all of us and, and restore that faith. That doesn't give me enough information to really understand the proposal. I will say that we have really robust and longstanding features before, during, and after the election that I have confidence in and that Minnesotans have confidence in to make sure that we root out any problems and find any wrongdoing where there is any. And there's precious little over the years. A, the Trump appointed a federal district court judge in Minnesota who uh, looked at election top to bottom, Judge Brazel, found in her decision that the level of fraud or misconduct in one segment of the electorate since 1979 was, I think, 0.00004%. That's a federal judge appointed by the president. Um, and so I'm satisfied that the systems that we have now work. I'd be interested to know either now or offline what, what's the kind of misconduct that you think is happening or that your constituents think is happening that would merit this kind of thing. So I, I'd love to address it with you offline. I, I think... I have more questions um, uh, than answers.